Good morning, I'm Harley Schlanger from the LaRouche Organization with your daily update for October 26, 2021. Today I'm going to talk about the danger of war. I know we've discussed this a lot, but the danger keeps increasing and will increase until all power is removed from the hands of the military-industrial complex. There's a reason they're called war hawks. They're addicted to war. It's not only how they make their money, it's their self-identity. Having the sense of power, the arrogance of power, that they can dictate to the world what rules are allowed, the so-called rules-based order. And we're seeing this in, in a number of areas. I, I want to look at a few arenas where this is the case and why this is a greater danger today than it was even last week. First, we have the new ambassador for, appointed by Biden for uh, U.S. Ambassador to China, Nicholas Burns. Now, in his congressional uh, confirmation hearings, he launched a, an all-out attack on China. Now, one would think, as an ambassador, as one who's applying for the position of being the uh, di top diplomat to another country, you would have a certain amount of diplomacy. Instead, he accused China uh, falsely of genocide in Xinjiang province. Uh, this is a, a story that's been proven to be false. Uh, there, there's no genocide against the Uyghurs. The Chinese did conduct, for a period of time, a counter-terror policy against Islamic fundamentalists who returned to China from fighting in Iraq and Syria. But instead of killing them, they were given job training. They were given language training. The population has doubled in Xinjiang province. Uh, there are more mosques in, in Xinjiang province than anywhere else probably outside of some of the most devout Muslim countries. Uh, the incomes have doubled. That's hardly an example of genocide. Yet he pushed that line. He also accused China of bullying, which is kind of interesting coming from him. Uh, he said we need enormous latitude in expanding military relations with Taiwan. Now, who is Nicholas Burns? He was the spokesman for Madeleine Albright between 1995 and 97, when the Clinton administration carried out sanctions against Iraq, which killed over 500,000 Iraqi children by depriving them of food and medicine. Uh, when asked about this, Albright said it was a price worth paying to get rid of Saddam Hussein. So who is Nicholas Burns, who, is a, uh, who justified this policy, to talk about so-called genocide in Xinjiang province? He also spent time in the, he was the ambassador to NATO, U.S. ambassador to NATO from 2001 to 2005, when NATO was brought in as a full partner in the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq, which turned out to be complete failures, massive killing took place. Uh, for what? Well, in Iraq, it was based on lies. So the fact that Burns goes up and piously presents himself as a defender of Western freedoms against Chinese aggression uh, is something that much of the world is laughing at. But it indicates the extent to which the War Party is in control of Washington as no one brought any of these things up to him during his, uh, his confirmation hearing. Now, secondly, we have the escalation of NATO threats against Russia and also China. Jens Stoltenberg, the head of NATO, is talking about the need to combat the Russians on every front in Eastern Europe. Uh, the German defense minister, Annegret kramp karrenbauer gave a curdling, blood-curdling interview to a German publication where she said, we have to make it very clear to Russia that we are ready to use such means so that it has a deterrent effect beforehand to, def to defend NATO partners from Russian attack in the Baltic or the Black Sea. She's talking about using nuclear weapons. We have to make it clear we're ready to use such means, that is, nuclear weapons, against Russia. Secondly, Russia has no plans to attack anyone in the Baltic or the Black Sea. It's NATO that's provoking confrontations there, as last summer in the Black Sea outside of Crimea. So 
the, it's NATO and the United Kingdom and the U.S. that are engaging in these provocations. So once again, we see the rhetoric of war coming from Western leaders. Now, then we have something a little bit different. The likely flop of the COP26 climate change conference, or as I've been calling it, the flop 26. Uh, remember, Prince Charles said the, the world will probably end in 8 to 12 years if we don't enact measures, dr uh, drastic measures, to reduce the temperature. And how are we going to do that? By shutting down use of fossil fuels, nuclear energy, uh, manufacturing, production, uh, combustion engines, and so on. In other words, a radical policy which will lead to depopulation, will lead to hunger. We're already seeing the effects of this with the soaring prices of oil and gas and utility bills and the so-called scarcity of materials. So what looms behind it if this conference fails? As it will, because most countries going there have no intention to give up fossil fuel usage. In fact, they're increasing their use now because solar and wind are inefficient. So there's a resort to terrorism looming in the background. And this became clear in a New Yorker magazine article that quoted approvingly from a podcast uh, calling for greenies to give up peaceful protests and engage instead in, quote, intelligent sabotage, unquote. The person who said this is someone named Andreas Malm. He said, quote, it is time to get destructive in a way of combating man-made climate change and forcing people to depend less on fossil fuels. He called for attacks on construction machinery, um, energy plants, and so on. Malm, by the way, is the author of a book called How to Blow Up a Pipeline. Now, given the apocalyptic warnings that are coming out from the climate change gurus, based on their fake science, that we're about to lose civilization, along with the effects of hyperinflation, young people could be recruited to such actions through the language used by people like Prince Charles, uh, but also Greta Thunberg, also by Joe Biden and, and Boris Johnson. So this is something to be taken very seriously. It's important that flop, COP26 turns into FLOP26, but we have to beware that there are people prepared to use it as an excuse to launch violent terrorist actions. And don't forget, it wasn't that long ago that we had someone like the Unabomber in the United States, and we had left and right wing terror gangs roaming through Europe, in many cases connected to something called Operation Gladio, which was a NATO operation that is, false flags that were run by the intelligence services as an excuse for a crackdown. Now, finally, the other thing to keep an eye on is the deepening crisis in the Eurozone. You have a showdown between the European Union with Poland and with Hungary over various aspects of the assertion of the European Union that it must have total legal authority over and above any national laws. In Poland, one of the issues here is the gender policy, uh, where there's a resistance to EU gender policy in Poland, similarly in Hungary. So what's being asserted by the European Union is that the EU has the right to dictate legal and moral policy to any member state, over and above national laws, over and above national culture, religion, and so on. Now, this is an attack on sovereignty. It's also taking place on energy policy, where countries that don't want to give up nuclear or don't want to give up coal are being told they must do it to adhere to the COP26 guidelines. This is only going to get worse, and it looks as though there's a real likelihood, as, as many people have expected for a long time, for an implosion of the European Union, which would be a good thing. Now, one of the things I would recommend to combat this and to be prepared to wage these fights coming up is to circulate the statement issued by Helga Zepp-LaRouche from the Schiller Institute and Gus Burkhout of Clintel, Climate Intelligence, called A Wake-Up Call. The danger for mankind is not the climate, but toleration of a devious policy that uses climate to destroy us. 
That's the policy of Klaus Schwab and the Davos billionaires. That's the policy of Mark Carney and the financial community, which is using policing methods to ensure that banks make no loans that go to energy producers or manufacturers. So this wake-up call defines the real issue. That is, what is the nature of man? Do we believe in human beings as creative, capable of solving problems with making scientific discoveries and developing new technologies? Or do we consider human beings to be animals, fighting over a shrinking pie, seeking their own peace at the expense of every other human being? That's the issue. What is your notion of the image of man? Yesterday, I went through what Vladimir Putin said about this at a Valdai Club meeting in Sochi recently. I'd urge you, if you haven't seen it, to go back to the October 25th um, update to get the quotes from Putin. So that's what I have for you today, and I will see you. Oh, by the way, the Schiller Institute call is available. The Schiller Institute Clintel call is available at SchillerInstitute.com. See you tomorrow.